Welcome everybody. Uh, this time we have Tim with us. Tim is a core contributor that is working on uh, a few very nice integrations, uh, one of which is close to be ready and we'd like to get some feedback. So today um, he's going to show us what, what he has been uh, working on. Uh, I have seen some small portions of code and it seems very nice. Uh, I, have, I have to say I haven't used this library yet. Uh, we, we will be talking about uh, HTTP servers and, and platform. And yeah, I leave it up to Tim. Thank you for joining, Tim. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm Tim, part of the PIC team. And today we'll be looking at the HTTP modules that we've added to platform recently. Uh, they, we, I've started playing around with them about around the start of this year, and, it, and only recently we've finally got around to doing a second revision, a second pass on it, polishing it up a little bit, and adding it to the effect organization. So maybe the best way to start is maybe looking at the maybe we look at the reference docs and go over the model. And then once we've maybe had a chat over that, maybe we can build something and demonstrate yeah. it. All right. So amongst all these other great modules, here is the effect of uh, the HTTP client module. And this is, we're looking at the platform, platform node package here. Uh, we'll just look at client first. So at the core of the HTTP client module is this client interface. First of all, the HTTP module is in the platform package. So it's supposed to be um, implemented by potentially different runtimes in, in the future. Yeah, so in the, the core platform package, we're putting cross-platform implementations. So things like fetch, which is available on every platform, um, as well as there's some other things in here that can be used on every platform. Um, so within the core platform package, we include fetch, but also in the node one, there is a, a node native implementation using the node agent. Um, but anyway, the core of it is this client interface, which is a simple, uh, simple function that takes in a request and returns an effect. Um, and then in most cases, uh, so the actual or well, the core clients return a client response as the success type. So simply put and a client takes a request returns an effect which by default has a response but then you can map it to whatever you like um, and to illustrate that if we look at the fetch client client dot default oh yeah where's default no it's not in here Good old reference stocks don't have namespaces. Um, yeah, probably something we need to add. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but the client.default type is a client that returns a client response. And the response is one of these guys, which implements an incoming message, has a status code. An incoming message has things like um, the headers, JSON, text, URL, params, body, array buffer, and a stream. So you've got several different ways of accessing the body. Um, so when the response first comes back, it's only passed up to the headers. And then you can further uh, request the body using these accesses. <clears throat> which is similar to to what 
fetch does behind the scenes. Yeah, so it's very similar to the fetch model um, in a lot of ways. Uh, cool. But I think one of the key things that differentiates this from a lot of HTTP clients is the way you can compose together your client. So if I go, go back here. So there's a bunch of combinators and mapping functions in here for creating the client that fits your needs. So like, for example, you can filter filter by status. Maybe we pull up a quick, quick example. Um, client. Uh, schema. Okay, cool. So here we're pulling out uh, a default client, which is just a simple client, which takes in requests and returns a response. And then we're using some of the client combinators to build out our custom client. So here we only want responses with an okay status. And then we can do things like contra map on the request and prepend the URL with like a base URL, for example. And then you can add as much of these combinators as you like to, let's say, add bearer tokens. And those could be effectful operations as well. Um, and then you end up with a client that you can start sending requests to. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff you could play with in here. Uh, if we go back, back up here. And then so the other modules in here include uh, things for manipulating bodies, for manipulating headers. Oh, that's the node implementation of the client, which uses the node HTTP module instead of fetch. Any particular reason why we don't use fetch in node? Uh, we do. It's <coughs> it's still it's the def uh, the client under so under this module the fetch implementation is included. But if you really want to use the node version, you can. But I mean, is there any particular reason why one would want to use the Node client in Node? So I have run into issues with Fetch where you can't control uh, things like response timeouts. Um, I remember a while back I was doing some work where a request would take several minutes to respond. I was doing some crazy reporting and I had to switch to the Node to the node implementation because then I could then control the timeout and the agent. So there are cases where a bit more control is needed and the node client is perfect for that. Uh, got the response module. Most of the things you need for responses are on the response itself. But there are some helpers here for working with schema. So if you had, uh, want to, if you have a schema and you want to decode it, decode the, like a JSON body to your schema, then there's some helpers here to do that. I think in our sample we're using that. There we go. So here we're using the schema body JSON helper to decode a response to a to-do. And then you can just flat map uh, your response. Uh, yeah. And then there's a module for working with URL parameters. And it just has stuff like set, head, append, Empty. Cool. Um, so that's a very high 
overview of a client and then it's sibling the server um, so at the core of HTTP servers are apps and it is modeled a little bit differently to the client uh, so an app is just a plain effect but it receives the quest through context and then we have the the default variant which uh, in the success channel of the effect is a response any particular reason why we haven't done kind of the same on the client side uh, i found through usage that it's a lot easier to pass requests into a function than doing provide service it just feels a little bit awkward to uh, like provide a request via context when using a client but when uh, when it came to the server API it felt a bit more natural got um, it well in one in one end you are invoking something in the other end you are receiving cool so yeah we it's a simple effect and the by default uh, in the success channel we have the server response and if we go back yeah uh, so the body module headers url params are shared with client uh, the error module is specific to the server we've added um, some e-tag generation for at the moment it's just for file responses and it will generate uh, currently a weak e-tag for uh, cache validation uh, form data so I've added a pretty comprehensive form data module um, in the node implementation under the hood it uses busboy um, and it offers a stream API as well as uh, going straight to disk so nothing hits memory and there's a bunch of um, fiber refs in here for controlling it so you can do things like for your entire server you can set the limits for file sizes and file limits or you can do it per handler and then it also contains things for uh, using schema with form data uh, we can probably take a look at that later it includes some middleware modules so in here we have some very simple middleware we'll probably add more later but for now it just has logger um, as well as a tracer and one that combines both of them and the tracer will add spans over every request um, spans from the native effect tracing module um. I guess here the uh, then the auto package could add uh, a tracer that that also takes the the tracing from uh, from the because uh, open telemetry tracing can propagate through HTTP calls if the client mm. adds um, a tracing information and the server receives the tracing information setting it as a as a parent oh yeah yeah that's probably a good idea actually so like if you use the HTTP client it propagates things yep I'll add that to the list because <laughs> that's the beauty of open telemetry linking between yeah yeah the propagation of yeah. trace IDs through all your different systems um we have uh, the quest and response modules 
and they're very similar to the client ones but they're kind of flipped like the request one you the request one you access the um the, the request body uh, very similar to if it was a client response and then the response module which has a bunch of constructors for creating all the various types of responses so things like empty response json file from a schema or you can send a stream bunch of things in there um, and then which kind of brings us to some of the bigger ones which are the router module and the server module so uh, a router if we go to the model is the implementation of a HTTP app So you can build up your routes and then pass it straight to your pass it straight to an HTTP server or use all the different effect APIs on it, like catch tags or catch tag for error handling, or you can flat map it. And um, for the node implementation, it's using the find my way. Oh, sorry. The router is actually implemented in the core platform package and it's using find my way for npm which uses a radix 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 tree and there's just like a bunch of methods here for all the different http methods you can combine routers together so you could have a router that handles a single part of your domain and then merge them together later uh, and then there's also combinators in here for providing services to routers and that's useful for um, uh, the moment you use effect apis on a router it coerces it into an effect or the http app type uh, but if you keep it as a router type, then merge them together later, it builds a single Radix tree out of the combined routers instead of having multiple routers stitched together. I guess we could also add provide layer and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah we could. Um, the only thing is it's per per request. Yeah, it's the, not advisable, but Yeah, it's not advisable, but um we could add those. And then the server module which uh the server interface just has a single method on it, serve and exposes the address it's listing on and then there's an accessor in here where is it there's a bit of an early type signature but um, this is what you use for uh, turning your HTTP app into a running running instance and in the In the platform node package, we include the layers, the actual implementation for it. And then the URL, URL parents module, which is the same as the uh, same as the HTTP client. And if we take a look at a quick example. So here we're creating our server layer, which um, at the moment you pass in a lazy HTTP server instance, and then the arguments 
that we'll use for the listen call. And there's also a conf config variant of the layer, so you can pass in uh, the listen arguments as a as a config. So you can pull in ports from the environment quite easily. And then here we're creating our router. So we start with an empty router, and then we add routes using the the uh, method helpers. So on the root HTTP path, we're just sending uh, echoing back the request URL. So this is just a quick example of how you access the current HTTP request using the um, server request tag. And then we're creating a post route, which accepts uh, some form data. So here we're using one of the provided request schema helpers. And we can use this uh, form data file schema helper, which um, is an array of files. So you can validate um, your form data as a files files field, and then it contains a bunch of files. And then we're logging in, returning an empty response. And then finally, we wrap it all up by calling serve. And the middleware, you can pass in middleware here, and this middleware will wrap the entire HTTP chain, including the sending of a response. And those are, that's for the cases where you might send like a stream back and the stream might take uh, quite a bit of time to send. And this ensures like all the timing includes the sending of the stream. Uh, and then here we're just turning our serve effect into a, into a layer and that will have the type uh, it will be a layer never, never, never. And never, never, never? Uh, yeah. We're yeah, providing. because you're, you're scoop discarding, yeah. Yeah. And then we just launch it and using run main from the platform package, which will handle interruptions and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, cool. So maybe we can quickly build something. Yeah. Let's build something. Hmm. I'm trying to have a template somewhere. Perfect. Call this uh, HTTP demo. Well, close it down. This already has um, a bunch of stuff in it already. That started. I'll open this in VS Code. Alright. Yeah, what have we got here? Uh, so we've got a core and HTTP package in here. Uh, looks like we've got a greeter service, and I've already set up in here a really basic HTTP server with a hello route. So I think maybe we could quickly build out a CRUD app, maybe that does users or something. 
Yeah, that's that's it. right. Alright, so the first thing we need is a user service. Uh, we probably need to define a user. Do I have a common definition here? No. Uh, we'll give users the name and an age. We give it an ID. If we omit the ID for oh yeah. so in closing parentheses, user without dot schema maybe before we want uh, the struct schema yep. oh, I need to turn into a top Schema dot two It's probably type of user without ID. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Cool. And then you user. ID of one for now. Cool. And then we'll just quickly make a service out of that. Uh, export users interface. Then effect, yeah. Yes. Oh. 
Oops, actually it's on it, sorry. And then we'll give it a tag. From the context. Uh, that's probably going to be users, otherwise, it conflicts with the class definition. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then we just quickly make a layer. The index is wrong, me, so I'm just going to delete it. Yeah. So, really basic user service. Here we go. Um, maybe in HTTP, we'll create a module for users. This is one way you could structure it where you have like a, a separate router per section of your domain and then you combine them later. The first you start with MP router and then we want to add our create route which will be post. Then in here we can um, we want to get a user from the request. So to do that, we will create a helper that pulls a user from a JSON body. In the HTTP module, we can use the request namespace and use schema body JSON. We'll import our user service. Or this. Be the next one. Up. And for we want the user or the ID. And then we want to encode a user for the response. This is start user. Uh, so here we have an effect that will take in a request and return a user of an ID. And here we have uh, something that will take in a user and give us back a response. So let's use this. Uh, decode user. Now we should have our user here. It's not a user, that is a user without ID. And then we create our user. Mm, from, oh, we need 
not use the service. Users dot users. And use our uh, create message from the user about ID. And now we can send that back. Probably need to yield and code. <clears throat> uh, this one is not effectful. Okay, uh, that's weird. Uh, in this case, the effect is embedded in the response. Yeah, but the schema may have effectful transformations in it. Yeah. Um, and the effect is evaluated as part of the server. Uh, so we go to the model body. Yeah, so maybe Maybe it does make more sense to make the creation of bodies uh, effectful in some cases. Well, I mean, it's not like you have many choices if the schema you provide has a transformation in it that is effectful, uh, that function will throw. Yeah, the other example was a stream. Um, the stream can throw, but you can't um, evaluate it then and there, if that makes sense. Uh, so I did add effect body. I oh, got it. So the body in itself is an effect. Yes. Uh, so you can attach an effect that results to a non-effect body. And then stream is quite similar. You can uh, kind of wrap it around a stream, but you kind of have to set the error to unknown. And I guess I mean, what, what happens if that, if the encoding fails? Yeah, so currently it just um, sends back a 500. And what does it do? Uh, respond. It tries to send back the response, and if there was an error handle uh, in the response, it's tries to send a 500 unless the headers have already been sent. Yeah, I'm not sure how else we can do that. Anyway, we can think about that. Some more. Um, so here, we're using the encode user helper to return back a user response. Uh, and then we can do things like HP router dot tags. 
and then do things like handle the pass errors. And send back. I probably send something back a bit more useful than this, but let's say four hundred for now. Again, this this parse error is only the parsing from the request, not even from the request, parse errors yeah. from from the encode back. Yeah, that's right. Um, and at this point, we have back uh, a router that requires a server request, the user service, and has the request error. So we can then go back to a um, main HTTP server file <clears throat> and mount that router in here. And we can Any reason it. why we are explicitly requiring the server request in the router? Because it seems to me that the router type could add it automatically and keep it clean from the from the R. Um, yeah, I could exclude it, I guess. There's no particular reason it's doing it. Because uh, yeah. thinking um, from a user perspective, if I want to use I want to create a router and inside my router I access anything custom like a database or so, so on and so forth, I should see it in the R. But yeah. it's fairly normal that I access the, the, the request and the type is already an alias on top of effect. Mm. So your, your type may be squashed a little bit in user land. Yeah. Yeah, we could definitely remove it from the router type. I guess we'll just need to work out where to add the exclude, but you know, it should be pretty, keep it a bit cleaner. Uh, cool. Uh, it's complaining because we haven't added our user service. That's a good sign. It's so in effect, let's do its job. Uh, use this live, there it is. And now uh, we're happy. Good. Um, if we run this. Is HTTP. Yep. Maybe let's pull out Come on. Mm, um, Should we build? Yeah, we should probably build. I'm not sure why it's doing that. There's a relative import, see if that works.
the arrows, great. It's probably ETS note that doesn't. Yeah, that template was a recent thing, so it needs some needs a bit of work probably. see if we get a 400 we okay. do indeed get a four, uh, 500 uh. oh yeah because we're not sending back we're not sending JSON yet yeah there's our 400 And we need to send name. The page. Good old team. <laughs> there we go. Great, working. And if we remove the H field, the schema should do its job. Cool, so that's um, I think that's enough just to show the bits and pieces and how they fit together and how it works with schema. Uh, maybe we can quickly add the well, you have the logger tracer middle middleware. Yeah. Uh, we see the logs in the in yep. the console, I guess those comes from the logger mm -hmm. side of things. Should we maybe try to see a span? Yeah, sure can. Uh, so let's quickly go to our user service and add a span here. Uh, span. Users. Oh. Okay. Um, so to do that, we will need to pull in. Maybe let's quickly do open telemetry. Open. Uh, Check if I've got tempo running. There we go. And to use open telemetry, first we have to. And we want the tracer module and the node SDK module. Uh, and I think we want the I think we want the hotel exporter. The pull up example. Samples, yeah, this one. That guy. So we pull in the exporter. How about I just copy all that? And probably also the resource then. Yes. I will need that. Uh, 
Uh, have we forgot the tracer? Um, cool. That's everything. So the resources for identifying our service. The no disk DK sets up the exporter. Any, the any reason why we're like saying and as any? As so uh, obvious as any. It's a de development <laughs> development artifact. <laughs> yeah. The uh, yeah, the open telemetry task can be a bit weird at times. But, um, cool. So we need to provide this layer. Oh, why are we doing it in this file? I should probably do this in the main. Yeah, we should do this in the main. Uh, we want to pull that one down. Uh, our main. Here it is. And right. Right, let's send a few requests. Maybe send a bad one. Oh yeah, I'll send a bad one too. of traces. Uh, so there's the 400. It should have included our user service bin. Maybe I need to build. What's he complaining about? Start doing important the minimal pressure on time. Something about open telemetry. Oh, really old team. <laughs> really old. Yeah, let's see if. Okay, I'm not sure why it's not including that child's fan. Oh, it's good old time ordering. For some reason, by default, it doesn't order it by the time it came in. There it is. There we go. There you go, effect under one millisecond. That was a very fast database call. <laughs> but it's nice because we didn't have to change literally anything in the code. We've added yeah, yeah. We just need to add the... integration and that's, and that's it. 
yeah, you can um, inspect uh, what's going on. And I guess probably we could even like add further metadata. Well, I guess we are setting labels for the status code and and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So when the response gets after response is sent, it will add the status code. Um, and if we did some logging uh, in our app, that would also show up. So like, for example, if we went to our user service and added um, Uh, fake log, hello. I do the build again. Probably just sort of did build much. We should Sounds go on and report the the error to the. To the open telemetry folks. Yeah. We should. Uh, Do we need to rebuild? Oh, we need to rebuild. Did I save the file? <laughs> With things like that. Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Uh, cool. Cool, cool. Well, that's a great start. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely a start. <laughs> and I guess where do we want to take it from here? Probably adding more uh, default middlewares, refining a little bit the, the APIs where, uh, where possible. And then we really, we would really love feedback. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Adding more middleware, and then just listening to the feedback and working out where everyone's needs are. Well, good, good. Uh, thank you, team, again. And sorry, it took a little bit longer than than initially expected, but uh, this was really fun, and I hope everybody enjoys it. Thank you.